The headline alone sounds like a sci-fi novel. Three parent baby. What? But this is for real. Get this. Mom's DNA, a donor's egg, and daddy's fertilizer makes the first baby of its kind ever. That's right. This procedure, as life-saving or life-creating as it appears, comes with humongous ethical questions that's re-sparking an old debate. Should you be able to a la carte mm -hmm. your baby's traits? Mm. Here was the scenario as reported by New Scientist and NPR. A Jordanian couple wanted babies for 20 years, but couldn't. They lost four babies during pregnancy, and two children died after being born with Lay syndrome, a genetic nervous system disorder. Finally, the couple tried a controversial procedure from New York fertility specialist, Dr. John Zhang. The technique removes the nucleus from the mother's egg and implants it into a donor's egg with its nucleus removed. The egg is fertilized and an embryo created. Essentially, the process leaves out the damaged DNA, but still gives the baby its mother's genes. This method has not been approved in the U.S., so the procedure was done in Mexico. Now let the ethical debate begin. Dr. Owen Davis, president of the American Society for Reproductive Medicine, said, quote, this work represents an important advancement in reproductive medicine. We look forward to it being an option for patients who risk transmitting mitochondrial diseases to their children. This offering isn't signing on to be experimented on. Local embryologist Ashley Wong disagrees. We often think about the parents that are going through um, and dealing with these children. I often think of my infertility patients and what they're going through to create a family. And the only voice that, that you won't often hear is, you know, the infant's voice. The implications, these are people. Just because we can create a biological child for this couple, should we have waited or should they have waited until the technology was safe? How do you make the technology safe? You you got to research it, right? you, you got to research it. But what do you try it on before you try it on humans? That infant did not consent to being experimented on. Mm -hmm. They didn't have a choice. They didn't have a voice. Will there be a day when you go to a menu and you're like, okay, I want my child to be six foot four, blonde, really strong, incredibly smart, funny, whatever? I hope not. Yeah. <laughs> I think so many of my traits that I find non-desirable are what make me me. I was just playing devil's advocate with her, by the way. And the difference right. between IVF and this is, you know, you have one sperm and, and an egg and they're fertilized outside of the womb. This is different. This is genetically altering the DNA of that egg. But am, am I correct in, in what you were talking about? With this family in particular, this was their only option for them to biologically have a child? Biologically. Okay. Correct. So but there are great risks that come with that. And okay. I'm not taking a stance on it. But that was her opinion. It's that no one's caring for the kid. If it didn't go right, well, let's say two years down the road, that kid still dies or, or passes away from this. I mean, you're jeopardizing the, the kid's life for this procedure. Yeah, and the bigger issue in this always has been the slippery slope. Kind of what you were playing devil's advocate saying, you don't get to go a la carte with your kids, right? right? Well. It's, I don't think it's going to be like that ever, ever for a long time in this country. I mean, the FDA has got to prove this stuff, and there's a lot of hurdles. Yeah. So. Fascinating debate. 